This is Half Chess. All right, all right, hold your applause, hold your applause. If you didn't see our last video, Half Chess is pretty much just regular chess cut in half. With the one exception being that you can castle on the first turn. Oh yeah, and there's no bishops. We concluded in the last video that Half Chess is a masterpiece, and it could even be better than regular chess. But the one problem being is that there's no online version of Half Chess. Well, ladies and gentlemen, not until today. This is how I coded Half Chess. Well, actually, did I really code it? I kind of cheated. I, uh, well, you'll, you'll figure, you'll see that. You'll see that later. I started this journey with pretty much no coding knowledge whatsoever. I was like a blind man in an empty room, just feeling around for whatever I could grasp onto. And so the first thing I did was look up, how do you even code regular chess? I actually have no idea. I tried figuring out how to code chess in Python and maybe even JavaScript. But at the end of the day, all the stuff I found, I had no idea what it meant. I had no clue how to decipher it. So I did what so many people in my generation would do. I turned to ChatGPT. And this is what it gave me. Uh, I'm not very good at coding. I don't really know what this means. It looks like they've printed out a chessboard with the letters being the pieces and then you type in your moves, but I tried putting it into a Python runner and it didn't work. So since I don't know how to troubleshoot coding, I sort of abandoned ChatGPT. And with ChatGPT not being possible to use, I sort of felt hopeless. I abandoned the idea that I would even be able to make this video, but that's when I had an idea. Have you ever had to code using Scratch in school? I know I certainly did. Scratch is coding made easy. It's coding for dummies. So that's why it would be perfect for me. The one problem was I didn't want my final product to be made in Scratch. I thought it was a little bit cheesy. It, it seemed like it was not real coding. So before I even started coding in Scratch, I looked up if there was some sort of way I could convert it into JavaScript or, in, or into Python. And luckily for me, there was. I present to you Leopard. This website was the one glimpse of hope I had for this project working out. What Leopard does is it actually converts Scratch into JavaScript and it even gives you a link so you can see your project on a browser. This was all well and good, but I actually had to code chess and scratch and I had no idea how to do that so instead of actually coding anything I just drew all the sprites that were needed for the game here are a few of the white pieces that I drew and then here is the board pretty simple stuff but then I had to get into the actual coding part now coding with Scratch isn't exactly as difficult as it looks on screen. It's actually a little bit more like this. Now block coding is a lot easier than coding in a real programming language, but still, there were a few obstacles I had to overcome. The most difficult challenge I had while making this game was trying to figure out how I wanted the pieces to move. My first idea was to use this code, that when a sprite was clicked, it would become draggable. That seemed pretty simple, at least to me, but when I tried converting it into JavaScript, it just didn't work. Apparently Leopard isn't even able to use the draggable command, so I had to come up with an alternative. Since I just assumed that the mouse would never be able to work since the draggable command wasn't accessible, I decided to switch to the keyboard. I set this code up so that when you hovered over a piece and you pressed either W, A, S, or D, it would move the piece in that direction, but only by one square. This is what the first version of the game looked like. As you can see, it's a little bit awkward to use, and the pieces get overlapped in a really strange way that just doesn't feel natural. 
I could have stopped here, but I wanted to keep coding. I wanted to make a game that felt just a little bit better to play. I thought that dragging your pieces felt the most natural, and I wanted to recreate that. But without the draggable command, I... I mean, it, it was going to be difficult. So, I made my own draggable command. This is what it looks like. So when the game starts, it will always be detecting whether you're touching the piece and if you're clicking it. And if you do click it, then it will go to where your mouse is. And this command to the right here just resets the piece to its starting square. This is what it looked like to use. So as you can see, it wasn't very good at moving the pieces. You had to do it very slowly, and you had to just keep touching the piece, otherwise it wouldn't move. And I also accidentally switched one of the black pawns with the rook. And then this is what it looked like when everything reset. All the pieces just teleported back to their starting squares. So in order to fix this, I had to go back into scratch. Instead of having a piece move only if it touches the mouse pointer, I changed it so it would activate the movement of a piece when it was within at least 15 pixels of the mouse. I also changed the code to reset back to the default position. So instead of teleporting the pieces instantly to their starting square, they would now slowly glide there in a very satisfying way. It looked like this. Oh, as you can see, very satisfying. And it was also a little bit easier to move the pieces too. I was much happier with this version of Half Chess. So that's pretty much the game. As you can see, you kind of have to follow the rules yourself. It would have been very difficult to code valid moves for each piece. And I figured since over the board works, this would work exactly the same. One problem with this final product is that you cannot overlap pieces. If you do overlap pieces, you'll have to reset the entire game to get them unstuck. So yes, it is a little bit of a problem, but it is still playable. And it's not that difficult to not overlap the pieces. If you want to play this version of Half Chess, the link is bit.ly slash half underscore chess. I will also link half chess down in the description. And hey, thank you for watching. I really liked making this video, and I hope you liked watching it. If this video gets a good amount of views, I'll try and revise this version of half chess to make it even better for you. And with that, I'm out. So looking back on this, I just realized I pretty much coded a slideshow that you can reset. So, take that as you will. Uh, anyway, see ya.